You had a guinea pig? Yes, but it died. When? I don't know. I'd really rather not think about it, all right? Actually, it's Bridget's room. I mean, it used to be her room. I mean, she died like 300 years ago. You can see a painting of her in the Great Hall. She's the one with the telescope. Okay, so you have to match up a pair of constellations. I made all the matches in 25 tries. Try to beat my record. Okay, so you have to match up a pair of constellations. I made all the matches in 40 tries. Try to beat my record. Okay, so you have to match up a pair of constellations. I made all the matches in 45 tries. Try to beat my record. Okay, so you have to match up a pair of constellations. I made all the matches in 50 tries. Try to beat my record. Okay, so you have to match up a pair of constellations. I made all the matches in 60 tries. Try to beat my record. You beat my score. Felicitations. You're too good, Nancy. Very nicely done. Executed like a professional. Good job. You go, girl. Guess you're not quite up to snuff. Not quite. Close, but no cigarillo. Nice try. Wah, 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 wah. Better luck next time. Nope. Good show, but you didn't beat my score. I really like this one. <laughs> Have another go at it. Want to play a game? You're so so good, give me another try. Do you want to play something else? Good job. Smashing. You're quite reflexive. You rock. Smoking. You're as fast as a march here, Nancy. I won. You lose. I got more. We can play bull, constellation match, petroglyph punch, skull and bones, and I also have a jigsaw puzzle. It was a tie. We'll need to play again. Tie. We'll need a tiebreaker. We're even. Let's play a game. Too bad. You lose. Mm-hmm. Let's see how quick your reflexes are. I'll time you. On your mark, get set, go! Five minutes. Four minutes. Three minutes. Two minutes. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Time. If you get the puzzle done in time, I'll return the telescope. If not, then you'll have to try again. My friend Hugo bought this for me. It's like go fish, but you have to collect three of a kind of weird things like zombies and ghosts. You go first. You go first. This is a game I bought in Arizona. You have to make as many matches as possible. On your mark, get set, go! And here's your reward. Ta-da! Un glostic pour vous, madame. Good show! You beat me! You're so, so good, Nancy. Right as rain. You're on fire. No flies on you, Nancy Drew. So sorry. You'll have to try harder next time. You've got to do better. Almost, but not quite. No glow stick for you. You're so very good. Great score. Hooray, you've won. Woohoo! Fanfare, please. You must be Nancy. I'm so pleased you're here. I'm Jean. I know you've come to visit my stepmom, but I'd love it if you could pop by whenever you get the chance. Oh, we'll have such fun. Let's play a game. Hi, Nancy. So, did you find what you were looking for on that secret passageway? Nancy, I'm so afraid. Someone just sent me this horrid message. Look at this. Hi. No. Don't really know. Never heard of that. Let's play this card game I found in your room. Okay. I actually found it in your room. Are you really? I mean, none of these weird things started happening until you came to Blackmore. How do I know it's not you who's behind all this? I think not. I don't think I can trust anyone right now. I wish I'd never come back to this place. It's old and cold, and I hate it. And I hate... I just don't want to be here. I don't want to hear. It's so scary to think people can be looking about behind these walls. But you shouldn't tell anyone about them either. If you do, they'll probably close them off and say they're too dangerous. Sure, what do you want to know? About Mummy? Uh, I mean, Linda. I do hope you'll help. She's been a bit out of sorts lately. I think maybe it's because of the lady in black. I was playing in Mummy's room when she wasn't there, and when I looked up, there was a lady all dressed in black putting something on Mummy's nightstand. I couldn't see her face because she wore a cape with a hood. The lady put a note on Mummy's nightstand, but I didn't read it. That's when Mummy started feeling poorly. I don't want to think about that. Let's play a game. It will cheer me up. Look inside the chest over there and pick a game. My great aunt said it's a hope chest, so I put my games in there in the hope someone would come over to play. Okay. Do you want to play a game? You won. Good show. I'll put the telescope back in your room first chance I get. I found one, but all it did was lead to this funny picture. Wouldn't you rather play a game with me? 
I'm so bored. No, we'll play a game, and if you win, I'll tell you where it is. Do you want to play a game? Cool. Okay. I found the secret passageway in the east hall. That's the hall with the coat of arms on the door. But it's not a very exciting secret passageway. You're going to be totally bored. Wouldn't you rather play a game with me instead? You have to wind her up. Unfortunately, my great aunt took the crank off. She's always doing mean things like that. My great aunt took the key. She probably thought I'd break something in there. But I found another one. Once I saw my Uncle Roger's toupee fly off during a windstorm. Talk about freaky. No, but I have heard weird noises like this howling. But not like a dog howling, more like something human. I don't want to think about that. It's scary enough having to live in this gloomy place. That would be lovely. Which game would you like to play? I have a fun astronomy game. I don't know why you have to go there. But if you must know, the way I got in was by moving the hands on that statue with all the arms. I was just playing around with them when this secret door just suddenly appeared. I highly doubt it. I mean, if there were, wouldn't someone have already found it? When I asked Ethel about it, she said that it's the Penvillain name and heritage that should be treasured. Blech. Mm-hmm. I took it outside to look at the stars. But if you want it back, you'll have to play a game with me. Sure. Yes, but I won't tell. Not unless you beat me at Skull and Bones. Why do you want to play some dumb old computer game when you can play a game with me? <sighs> no, I've never played it. Magic word? Uh, no. I think you're spending a bit too much time with that parrot. Like I said before, I couldn't really see her face, but she was kind of dressed like the lady in the Great Hall. <laughs> a flashlight? Oh, Nancy, flashlight is an American term. In the UK, we call it a torch. I don't have one, but I do have a whole bunch of glow sticks. If you want one, you have to play a game with me. That's the rule. Yes, but you know the rule. First, we have to play another game. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Coo, you're a daft one. Imagine me and Ethel running around in the middle of the night, pouring oil down drains. Well, uh, isn't that when weird rituals usually take place? In the dead of night? Anyway, you were probably just having a bad dream. Believe me, this castle can sometimes give you nightmares. Eleanor, I know it sounds weird. That's why I didn't want to tell anyone. It's too creepy. Sometimes I wonder if I just dreamed it all up. Mrs. Drake is always saying I have a rampant imagination. You can come in any time you want, even if I'm not here. I've got some really smashing things. I'm so happy you've come, Nancy. I hope you can make Mummy feel better. Come back soon. Toodles. Ta-ta. Au revoir. Bye. I did it perfect that time, didn't I? Well, almost perfect. Yes, Ethel. Yes, Ethel. Yes, Ethel. Good night. That was written by Charles Pemberlin way back in, like, the 1500s. When I read it, it seemed really familiar, you know? What is this book? Don't know, really. Ethel gave it to me. She said it belonged to my grandfather. Do you think Brady Armstrong is cute? No, what are they? I was hoping you could tell me. I found them in the hallway. I've never seen those before in my life. Oh, Ethel, do I have to learn this? Yes, I'm afraid you do. If I do well, can we play a game? Yes, but only in French. Oh... Écoutez, répétez. Je suis, tu es, il est. Je suis, tu es, il est. Nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. Nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont. What has Ethel really been teaching you? The firstborn of every other Penvillain generation gets to learn the family secret. One of my ancestors gave the Bosonese the job of making sure that initiates like me are properly prepared. The firstborn of every other Penvillain generation gets to learn the family secret. One of my ancestors gave the Bosonese the job of making sure that initiates like me are properly prepared. Do they know the secret? No, we have to figure it out for ourselves. Only you beat me to it. To that horrid rock. No, we have to figure it out for ourselves. Only you beat me to it. To that horrid rock. Tell me about Milo again. He was Randolph's grandson and the first initiate. Odor did not have the proper qualities for Randolph's instruction. Because he was stupid. No, Jane. It's because Randolph believed that the proper qualities skip every generation. We talked about that, remember? I guess. Milo was a great soldier, just like his grandfather. And with his grandfather's help, he was victorious at Khan. That was a battle fought in 1417, during the Hundred Years' War. That's right. But I don't understand something. The Hundred Years' War lasted longer than a hundred years, right? So why do they call it that? 
Why don't they call it the 116-year war, huh? Oh my, look at the time. We need to go over your geometry. Please open your book to page 46 and read silently. I got this at this really neat museum in the States. It's supposed to be an original Maya game, but don't worry. You don't have to, like, kill people or take their hearts out or anything. Looks like you're learning some interesting stuff. Bet you wouldn't say that if you were the one who had to learn it. Who's this? That's my mum, my real mum. She's an opera singer. It's not like she's famous or anything, but she does live in Paris. I'll be blue. Filius, filii, filio, filium, filio. Filius, filii, filio, filium, filio. Filii, filiorum, filiis, filios, filis. Filii, filiorum, filiis, filios, filius. And filius is Latin for? Sun. It's really easy to play. You roll the corn and move your warrior the number of dots on the corn. If no dots, then you get to move five spaces. You get two turns, but you can pass on your second turn. You just keep on going down this track, and you can capture my person if you land on him. Whoever gets all the warriors wins. That's my mum, my real mum. She's an opera singer. It's not like she's famous or anything, but she does live in Paris. Aren't you glad we don't have to use that thing to cook our food? I saw the kitchen. What happened to it? I guess you could say I happened to it. But it was Ethel's fault. She inspired me to study the oxidation rates of different kinds of cookie doughs. Only my snickerdoodle experiment got away from me. Okay if I bake a cake for Lulu? Sure, knock yourself out. Here, you can keep it if you want. I'm going to bake another cake for Lulu, if that's okay. Help yourself. Nigel gave that to me when I was in the library once. I think he was hoping it would scare me, but it didn't. I'm too smart to believe in that sort of stuff. Now look on the other side. You sure have a lot of games. I love games. I want to make computer games when I grow up. That symbol is a rune. Right side up, it means protection like a shield. But there, it's upside down. It means I'm in danger. Brigitte, with her eyes so bright, looks toward heaven at midnight. On the longest night of year, that's the one she holds most dear. Sorry, friends, she's often heard to say, How I wish that I could make you stay. She knows though they can't remain, Time will bring them round again. Brigitte, with her eyes so bright, Looks toward heaven at midnight. On the longest night of year, that's the one she holds most dear. Story friends, she's often heard to say, How I wish that I could make you stay. She knows though they can't remain, Time will bring them round again. Brigitte with her eyes so bright, Looks toward heaven at midnight. On the longest night of year, that's the one she holds most dear. Story friends, she's often heard to say, how I wish that I could make you stay. She knows though they can't remain, time will bring them round again. Here's your glow stick. If this one goes out, I'll let you play for another one. Here you go. You won. Good job. Okay, the password for my grandfather's computer is on his coat of arms, plain as day. I use that to make cakes for Lulu the parrot. That's why the ingredients are so nasty. Like I would eat mealworms. I totally love that show. Isn't Brady Armstrong so dreamy? Total hottie. <gasps> Nancy, what did you do? Oh no, what happened to Lulu? Ah, I'm telling. You're in big trouble, Nancy. Hi. Let's see. Rats. Here we go. Pass. You can go. Your turn. Too bad. So sad. Sorry. Another warrior bites the dust. Ha! Oh no. You lucked out that time. 
No fair. Let's play a game. Just one more game, please. Are you sure? Oh. I'm going to bake another cake for Lulu, if that's okay. Go right ahead. That actually smells kind of good. You're getting to be quite the bird cake cook, aren't you? Nope. Start digging. Do you have any skulls? Any bones? Your witches, please? Do you have any zombies? Any bats? Would you happen to have any ghosts? Do you have any coffins? Tombstones? Do you have any spiders? Any haunted houses? Go dig. Dig. Nada. Sorry. You had a guinea pig? Yes, but it died. When? I don't know. I'd really rather not think about it, all right? What is this book? Don't know, really. Ethel gave it to me. She said it belonged to my grandfather. Do you think Brady Armstrong is cute? That's my family tree. Ask me anything about anyone. Go on, ask me. Oh, uh, like he married Eve. <laughs> Duh, no kidding. I actually don't know anything about him. I think he was the son of Hugo, though, but I forget. She was a nun. I think she lived in Ireland. He was my grandfather, but I didn't know him because he died when I was little. I guess he was nice. He was very mysterious, and the people of Blackmore were afraid of him because he knew all these scientific things. No one knows much about him, though. A nun. He was Odo's brother. He lived in the Wild West in the Americas and was a bandit with El Diablo's gang. She was absolutely mad about cricket, the game, not the insect. She actually saw the first cricket match in 1744. Personally, though, I can't stand the sport. She never married and was bonkers for astronomy. She adopted her sister's son, Richard, who later got killed at Waterloo. Caroline was a chemist and helped identify the element lanthanum. I'm not sure what the element does. I think it's a heavy metal. Uh-huh. Cassandra was totally obsessed with lawn tennis and was one of the first people in England to have a court installed at her home. Hector was the first ball boy. She lived the longest of any Penvelin. I hope I live that long, but not if I'm all, like, creaky and cranky. She married the Lord of Limerick and did a lot of needlework. She had a ton of kids, too, like... Twenty! Can you imagine? Oh, oh, Charles was a famous judge and wrote very important books on law. But his boy, Garrett, drowned while he was really young. Oh, this is so, so cool! They say he was a spy for England, even though he lived in France. Isn't that so very? I'd like to be a spy. Oh, uh, I don't know. He doesn't have a coat of arms in the Great Hall because he didn't live here. Wasn't even a British subject. That's all I know. I don't know. I'm kind of tired right now. He was into cows. He did a lot of breeding of cows and sheep and got some kind of award from the king. He lived in France with his father, Le Comte de Roquefort. He was very interested in languages and translated books from Greek and Latin. He was a big explorer and went all over the world. He wasn't very close with his son, who was also an explorer. They'd only see each other by chance in weird remote places like Samarkand and Walla Walla. Just that she was burned as a witch, but it wasn't true, and her father, James, died when he saw her die. And then the family fled to France. I don't want to talk about this. Like the Queen of England? Oh, you mean Elizabeth, my ancestor. It's weird that she's the only ancestor named Elizabeth, since it's such a popular name. <sighs> Esther Pemberlin Romberg, born in 1897 and died in 1951. Her friends called her Polly. He got into a big fight with his brother, James, and lived in France. He was a dwarf and became a trusted confidant to Louis XIV. Little people often held positions of great esteem at that time. He was a soldier for the French. He was killed in the War of Spanish Succession in July of 1702. Uh, he drowned on his 19th birthday. Uh, he, like, lived and died. End of story. They were lost at sea. I guess they traveled a lot to Canada, especially to Oak Island. She married the Duke of Ballingsford, but she stayed at Blackmore to raise her son Thomas, who inherited the estate when his grandfather Charles died. He made pizza. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. I don't know anything about him except that he died in 1433 because he outlived all of his siblings. <sighs> Can we stop soon? Helene married the Duke of Bouville and died in 1760. End of story. Um, he had a lot of kids, and his dates were 1401 to 1466. That was Isabel. She wrote many letters about the French Revolution and actually saw Marat's dead body in the bathtub. Talk about gross! He died when he was like nine. Don't laugh, but he invented the lawnmower bag in 1831. I swear I'm totally not making this up. He never married, but one day, when he was very old, a baby was found at the doorstep to the manor. He took her in and raised her as his own. 
That was Eleanor. Hello, it's pronounced Jean. He was killed by a boar on a hunting trip. They eat people's flesh, you know. No, I'm kidding. But he really did get killed by a boar. Serves him right, though, for hunting some poor little animal. I'd rather not. I'm kind of bored. Wouldn't you rather play a game? It's Genet. I think he wrote plays, maybe. I don't know, I forget. He was an opera singer, just like my mom. He sang in some Mozart operas, I think. He was this huge naturalist and did a lot of exploration in the Amazon. I think there's a plant named after him. Or maybe a monkey, I forget. No, that's how they spelled it then. She got married to this duke somewhere in Flanders. Yeah, they used a lot of Latin names back then and weird spellings. He became like a priest or parson or something. Loves plants, hates noise. You can ask her about it. She's usually in the conservatory with her plants. Isn't that a pretty name? If I have a daughter, I'll name her that. He was a doctor of medicine and did a lot of research on icky skin diseases. Happily, I'm blessed with perfect skin. I forget, I think she was... Oh, I don't know. She died when she was a little girl. It was really sad. Um, she got shipwrecked on this deserted island with a whole bunch of yahoos and they wrote a story about it. Yeah, that's it. She was completely daft. She'd wear really bizarre outfits and she was one of the first women to ride on a steam train. Milo inherited not only his grandfather's red hair, but his military prowess. Milo was instrumental in the Siege of Khan and was awarded even more lands by Henry V. He died in the flu epidemic. She died when she was a baby. I have many ancestors who died young, but Ethel said that Penvalins in general live a long time. He lived in the U.S. for most of his life and married this weird woman named Eustacia. She's still alive and sometimes calls us. She's totally creepy. Yeah, he isn't very exciting really, like farming and cows. His son Milo is much more interesting. I don't know much about her except that she was very loved by practically everyone in England and there were a million poems written about her. If I have a boyfriend, I'd never let him write a poem about me. Blech. Mm, let's see. He had a wooden leg and he was attacked by wolves once. That's all I remember. He made a fortune in the New World and bought back most of the lands that were confiscated by Cromwell which I think is boss because everyone was so mean and nasty to the Pemberlins up until then. She died in France during the war. I guess she worked for the French resistance. Randolph the Red, so named for his bright red hair, was considered a hero at the Battle of Portiers. For his heroism, King Edward III awarded him with the lands in the region called Penvelin. That's how we got our name. He died in Waterloo fighting against Napoleon. He was a knight but died in some kind of jousting tournament. He was twins with Josephus. It's a real sad story. She and her granddaughter Rachel lived in France during the war and were killed. He lived from 1358 to 1412. No, 1411. We don't know very much about him. She was a big collector of impressionist artwork, but most of it was destroyed in a fire. He lived most of his life on the island of Mauritius and discovered like a million plant species. He was Charles's grandson and wrote a lot of poetry. He also had three wives. Catherine, Anne, and Mary, <laughs> but not like at the same time. They died and he just remarried. She was married to the Duke of Barrowbold and died in the Great Fire of London. Ah, uh, he was born in 1448 or 9. I'm kind of bored doing this right now. He was Edward's little brother. He named his son after him. He was an explorer just like his father. He was kind of a whiner, so I heard. No key without toil, no fire without oil, no key without toil, no fire without oil, no key without toil, no fire without oil, no key without toil, no fire without oil. Uh, oh yeah, my actions ensure that my name will endure to the end, Penvalin. Whatever you just found, it's mine. I'm the Penvalin, not you. Besides, I would have found it before you did if I didn't have to sit there all day learning all that other silly rubbish. What is that? A rock? 600 years of secrets and mystery and puzzles all because of a stupid rock? No way. There must be something under it. Help! Nancy, help me! It's pitch black in here. I can't see anything. Get me out of here, please! I'm sorry I was mean to you before. I'm sorry for everything. It's my fault Linda's sick. I mean, she's not really sick. I just made her think she is. I left that curse in her room and gave her allergy pills and put her medicine in a moisturizer. I just wanted to go away. I just wanted to be daddy and me and mommy, my real mommy. Please don't make me talk anymore, Nancy. <gasps>
There's no air in here. I can't breathe. Get me out of here, Nancy, please. I'm running out of air. Nancy, hurry. Thank you.